thus the Lord thus spoke to the sannyasi <coughs> almost in the same way that he spoke to the Bhattacharya of Puri and by forceful arguments he nullified the Mayavad interpretations of the Vedanta Sutra. Note here that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he spoke to Prakashananda Saraswati with forceful arguments. He did not just speak uh, with uh, some so-called humility. This is preaching. <coughs> preaching means to aggressively present the truth and to point out how various misconceptions of the truth are wrong. Why should this be done? Because otherwise the audience will get a confused picture of reality. So as much as it is important to state that the sky is blue, it is also important to state that those who say that the sky is purple are false. They are saying something wrong. So by forceful argument Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu preached. He is the ideal preacher and he shows us how to preach. Um, one uses forceful arguments. Preaching is more or less declaring an intellectual and ideological war against uh, people who have adverse conceptions of reality. And therefore you need to be aggressive in a war. This is not physical aggression. It is ideological aggression. And this has to be done with forceful arguments. The arguments have to be sound. They have to be valid and they have to be sound. And one has to do it in such a manner that the opposing party, uh, their views are nullified in the eyes of any intelligent neutral third party. So he nullified the Mayavad interpretations of the Vedanta Sutra. All the sannyasis there claimed that the Lord was the personified Vedas and the personality of Godhead. So they recognized that Lord Chaitanya was, was uh, fully cognizant of the message of the Vedas. All the sannyasis were converted to the cult of Bhakti. All of them accepted the holy name of the Lord Sri Krishna and they dined together with the Lord in the midst of them. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very kind that uh, he, he ate along with them. He uh, made them chant the holy name of uh, Lord Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. <coughs> made them Vaishnavas and then he ate with them. After this conversion of the sannyasis, the popularity of the Lord increased at Varanasi and thousands of people assembled to see the Lord in person. The Lord thus established the primary importance of Srimad Bhagavata Dharma and he defeated all other systems of spiritual realization. Notice this. Again, uh, you find Prabhupada repeatedly using uh, expressions which are commonly used in wars, intellectual war. He defeated all other systems of spiritual realization. After that, everyone at Varanasi was overwhelmed with the transcendental Sankirtan movement. While the Lord was camping at Varanasi, Sanatan Goswami also arrived after retiring from office. Formerly known as Sakar Malik, he had been one of the state ministers in the government of Bengal, then under the regime of Nawab Hussein Shah. He had had some difficulty in getting relief from the state service, for the Nawab was reluctant to let him leave. Nonetheless, he came to Varanasi. Uh, that whole history of how he managed to... He was actually arrested and put in jail uh, at a place near Malda. Uh, they, it is said that Nawab Hussain Shah's um, palace, ruins of his palace and his uh, prison are still there near Malda. And I have been shown uh, one place where Sanatan Goswami is reported to have been to have been arrested and kept, but uh, Sanatan Goswami he managed to leave. Uh, he bribed the prisoner, and then he left. He came all the way to Varanasi. Nonetheless, he came to Varanasi, um, and for two months the law taught him the principles of uh, devotional service. He taught him about the constitutional position of the living being. 
the cause of his bondage under material conditions, his eternal relation with the personality of Godhead, the transcendental position of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, his expansions in different plenary portions of incarnations, his control of different parts of the universe, the nature of his transcendental abode, devotional activities, there are different stages of development, the rules and regulations for achieving the gradual stages of spiritual perfection, the symptoms of different incarnations in different ages, and how to detect them with reference to the context of revealed scriptures. The Lord's teachings to Sanatan Goswami form a big chapter in the text of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, and to explain the whole teaching in minute details will require a volume in itself. These are treated in detail in our book, Teachings of Lord Chaitanya. Uh, this is found in teachings of Lord Chaitanya. Even in teachings of Lord Chaitanya, uh, this is quite, quite a substantial portion of the book. Here, chapter one of teachings of Lord Chaitanya presents in in uh, Prabhupada gives a summary study of Lord Chaitanya's teachings to Rupa Goswami in chapter one, but from chapters two, chapter. Chapters 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. All of this constitute Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings to Sanatana Goswami. Similarly, if you look in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, if you are interested, you, you can read it. And actually, it will be a very, very good study. Because this particular portion of Chaitanya Charitamrita and teachings of Lord Chaitanya is nothing but an analysis of the teachings of Srimad Bhagavatam. Madhya Leela chapters 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. All of these are very, very important. Very important. Thorough analysis. Very, very thorough analysis. So, very, very important thematic study <coughs> of uh, uh, the basic message of Srimad Bhagavatam. At Mathura, the Lord visited all the important places. Then he reached Vrindavan. Lord Chaitanya accepted, appeared in the family of a high caste Brahmana and over and above that as a sannyasi he was a preceptor for all the Varnas and Ashramas. But he used to accept meals from all classes of Vaishnavas. The Lord would not eat uh, he, from a non-Vaishnava. At Mathura, the Sanodia Brahmanas are considered to be in the lower status of society. But the Lord accepted meals in the family of such a Brahmana also because his host happened to be a disciple of the Madhavendra Puri family. Now this Madhavendra Puri family, this is something to be noted. Uh, what is the meaning of this Madhavendra Puri family? If you look at the disciplic succession that Prabhupada has presented uh, towards the end of his introduction to Bhagavad Gita as it is, you find that under Madhvacharya, you can see here is Sri Madhva. Um, and after Madhva, the next person who was uh, prominently responsible for for Madhvacharya's, for the transmission of Madhvacharya's teachings, <coughs> at least in one particular branch, the branch in which Madhavendra Puri appears, was Padmanavatirtha. And Narahari, or Narahari, uh, he was his uh, junior godbrother, and he was the next to succeed. Next was his junior godbrother, Madhva Tirtha. Next was his junior godbrother, Akshobhya Tirtha. Um, Padmanabha, Nrihari, Madhva and Akshobhya were godbrothers. And that information we receive from Bhakta Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, uh, who has taken material from, from uh, research on the Madhvacharya Sampradaya. Akshobhya's disciple was Jay Tirtha. And then comes Jnana Sindhu, Dayanidhi, Vidyanidhi, Rajendra, Jayadharma. Purushottama, Brahmanya Tirtha, Vyasa Tirtha. Vyasa Tirtha was very famous for his refutations of uh, Mayavad. Then came Lakshmi Pati Tirtha. Then comes Madhavendra Puri. Madhavendra Puri. <coughs> From Madhavendra Puri, we notice, uh, see, prior to Madhavendra Puri, if you look at Lakshmi Pati Tirtha and all the way up to Madhvacharya, uh, these were uh, located in as far as historical information goes, as far as I know, uh, these were located in South India, uh, specifically in Karnataka, where Madhvacharya's uh, preaching was primarily based. Uh, but from Madhavendra Puri, 
you notice Srila Balaji Vidya Bhushan says that uh, there was preaching going on in Gaudadesh, Bengal and other areas. So these are, we can call them North Indian followers of uh, Madhvacharya and they, they, they were distinct in uh, their understanding of the teachings of Srimad Bhagavatam compared to uh, this group, the earlier group. Now the earlier group, uh, this is a question that sometimes people ask that uh, Madhvacharya's followers seem to have a philosophy which is quite different and quite strange uh, compared to our teachings and yet we claim to be followers of Madhvacharya. What is the meaning of this? We are actually followers of Madhvacharya through Madhavendra Puri. From Madhavendra Puri onwards, the teachings of Srimad Bhagavatam became prominent. Prior to that, they would accept the teachings of Srimad Bhagavatam exclusively through the text of uh, Madhvacharya's commentary to the Srimad Bhagavatam. But from Madhavendra Puri, the uh, Madhavendra Puri is reported uh, by uh, Acharya Kavikarnapur to be a kalpavriksha from the spiritual world. So from Madhavendra Puri down, we notice that uh, there is emphasis on the main text of Srimad Bhagavatam itself because Bhagavatam is self-evident. Um, so then from Madhavendra Puri down, Ishwara Puri, Nityananda Prabhu, Advaita Acharya, all of them, this is the Madhavendra Puri family, they are distinct. They started taking the teachings of Srimad Bhagavatam very, very seriously. And after that, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came. Now, by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's kindness, we notice that in, in the various uh, Vaishnava disciplic lines, uh, all of a sudden, there suddenly came about an interest in Srimad Bhagavatam. Very interesting. This is simply Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's kindness. Uh, that uh, everyone starts talking about the importance of Srimad Bhagavatam, even in the Ramanuja Sampradaya. The Madhva Sampradaya also. Yeah, of course, Madhvendra Puri himself, uh, he liked the fact that uh, Madhvacharya followers, at least they were very strong in accepting uh, that uh, we are eternal servants of the Supreme Personality of God under all circumstances. And they were in staunch opposition to impersonalism. And Shala Bhaktivinoda Thakur states that uh, therefore Madhvendra Puri liked uh, liked uh, the Madhva Sampradaya and Madhvacharya had also introduced the position of Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, we all know very well that, that the Srimad Bhagavatam is the natural commentary on the Vedanta Sutra and um, we know that its position is uh, stated in the Garuda Purana. See, this is a quotation from Garuda Purana. The Garuda Purana has this to say. It has this to say, Arthoyam Brahma Sutranam Bharata Artha Vinirnaya Gayatri Bhashirupo So Vedartha Paribrahmita Purananam Samarupa Sakshad Bhagavato Dita Dvadasya Skandha Yuktoyam Satat Pichet Samyuta Grantho Ashtadasya Sahasra Srimad Bhagavata Abhida The meaning of the Vedanta Sutra is present in Srimad Bhagavatam. The full purport of the Mahabharata is also there. The commentary of the Brahma Gayatri is also there and fully expanded with all Vedic knowledge. Srimad Bhagavatam is a supreme Purana and it was compiled by the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his incarnation as Vyasadev. There are 12 cantos, 335 chapters and 18,000 verses. Now, this original Sanskrit text of the Garuda Purana, this is actually quoted in Srila Madhvacharya's commentary to the Srimad Bhagavatam. This statement regarding uh, Srimad Bhagavatam from the Garuda Purana was originally quoted by Sri Madhvacharya. Here is Madhvacharya's commentary on the first text of uh, the Srimad Bhagavatam and here towards the end he notes Brahma Sutra Mahabharata Gayatri Veda Sambandhas Chayam Grantha. This sacred literature is also directly connected with the Brahma Sutra, the Mahabharata, the Gayatri Mantra and the entire Veda itself, Bhuktam Jagarude and it has been stated in the Garuda Purana and exactly the text appears Arthoyam Brahma Sutranam Bharata Artha Vinirnaya Gayatri Bhashya Rupo, uh, Rupo Sao Vedartha Paribrahmita Purananam Sara Rupa. There's a slight difference in reading. Sakshad Bhagato Dita. Dvadasya Skanda Yuktoyam Shata Vichheda Samyuta. Grantho Shtadasya Sahasra Shri Mad Bhagavata Abhita. Iti. But this is most important. It appears as it is right here. Arthoyam Brahma Sutranam Bharata Artha Vinirnaya. This is the natural purport 
ఆఫ్ ద వేదాంత సూత్ర